Happy Thursday in formal geometry. Welcome to your first video lesson, which is kind of fun. Or maybe not, I guess it's up to you. It's up for you to decide. Just real quick, just make sure you take notes, you write down what I write on the screen because the sub will check to make sure you've written down everything I wrote in order for you to get your homework. So just play by the rules and write down what I write, okay? I promise it's pretty painless because you have been finding the area of squares and rectangles for a very long time, and really, it's pretty basic today. We add a little twist at the end, but it's nothing that you can't handle, okay? So let's get started. We are asked, can we tell which rectangle below covers more surface? Well, just glancing at these without really thinking much, they look almost the same size. A is more narrow but taller and B is a little longer, but we can actually compute the area of these by either counting how many individual little square units fit into this, but that would seem very tedious. So instead we know that we can just take the length 3 times its height, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Multiply those together to get an area of 18 units squared. And for B, we can do the same thing. I am 5 units long with a width of 4 for a total of 20 units squared. So in this example here, which rectangle covers more surface? Which one has more? Which one's made up of more? Squares, that would be B. B is larger. So that brings us to our first point here, our first definition, area. Area is the amount of surface covered by a figure. The amount of surface covered by by a figure. So in our example here, we had rectangles, right? I took up this much space. So how many squares were contained in that space? Well, for B, it was 20. So then that brings us to our next point. We measure area in units squared. So that could be inches squared, centimeters squared, um, millimeter squared, whatever your unit is, it's square units because you're literally seeing how many little square units can I fit into that shape. All right, good job, folks. Area of a rectangle. Area of a rectangle, I know you know how to do this. We normally say length times width, right? The length of our shape times the width of it. But I'm now going to use different words instead of those ones. I'm going to say base, it's our base, times our height. Base times height. That is our area. Base times height. We can abbreviate that. I can just call this B and I can call this H. So again, our formula for our um, area of rectangles base times height, BH. Let's try a few examples of those. Find the area of the quadrilateral. Well, we know that a quadrilateral just has four sides, nothing fancy there. So again, area equals base times height. Let's plug in. Our base on this example here is six. Our height is 2, crunch it out, and I get 12. And since we are given units feet, so it would be 12 feet squared. Moving on to our middle example here. Again, our area formulas base times height. Here's our base, 5.9. And our height is 4.5. Multiply those out and I should get something around 26 
0.55. Again, we're given our units as yards, so yards squared. And our last example on this slide, well, we all know that these little tick marks indicate that my sides are all equal, which makes this a square. So if this is 11, then I know that my base is also 11. So finding the area, area equals base times height. Plug in our 11s. 11 times 11 is 121. Given our unit, meters squared. Pretty basic, right? I know you've done that. I know you know how to do that. So we are just going to keep on rolling through notes. Area of a square. I know a lot of you always say, again, plain times width. But what's special about a square is we know that all of our sides are equal. I'm going to write this up for a second. Length times width. So since I know my length and width are equal, I'm just going to call them a side and a side because all the sides are the same. Side and side. So all our sides are the same on a square. They're all the same measure. So if I wanted to give that a variable, let's just use the letter S and S. So our formula for area of a square is our side times our side. Simplifying that, S times S. But what is S times S? Two S? No, that's if I was adding them together. It would be S squared. So your formula for area of a square is S squared, your side length squared. Let's just do a quick little example on this slide. So let's say I had the square that was seven by seven to find its area. I would take seven times seven and get 49. Okay, now we are gonna see what we can do by working backwards. We're gonna try to figure out a missing measure working backwards. So we are given the area of a square is 25 square feet. Find the length of a side. So whenever you have these working backward problems, guys, I would like you to write your formula. So I'm looking for the length of a side of a square. So we know the formula for the area of a square is S squared, our side length squared. Okay, now let's fill in what we know. We are given that the area is equal to 25 square feet. So where my area is, I'm going to plug in 25. And now all we have to do is figure out what our S is. So how do I undo something squared? Well, we simply just take the square root, take the square root. Square root of 25 is just 5. So we have a side length of 5 feet, because we are given units, 5 feet. And you can always double check yourself, which is nice. If I draw a nice little square here, and we think our side length is 5, well, 5 times 5, does that bring me to 25? Sure does. Checks out, got the green light, good to go. What about working backwards with a rectangle? So let's see what we are given. It says the area of a rectangle is 54 square inches and has a base of 9. Find its height. So we are looking for its height. So again, let's start off with our formula. Area of a rectangle is base times height. Plug in what we know. The area of a rectangle is 54 square inches. So where I have my A for area, I'm plugging in 54. 
Then we are told it has a base of 9. So where my B is, I'm plugging in 9. And we're looking for its height, so we're just going to leave that as just an H. How am I going to find what H is? Well, how do you get rid of times by 9? Divide, divide. 54 divided by 9 gives me 6. And since we are given our unit, it be 6 inches. Which brings me to my next point. Is remember, length isn't squared. It wouldn't be 6 inches squared. It's just 6 inches because a length is just a length. That's not the area. So let's just plug in to see if we make sure we did it right. 9 times 6. So when I find the area of this rectangle, 9 times 6, do I get 54? Bingo! Works out. All is good. Okay. I know those past few examples are pretty basic, but now is when we kind of make things a little bit more interesting. So here we are asked to find the area of a complex polygon. And just think of it as this. I took two polygons, in our case are two rectangles, and I squished them together. And now we have to figure out the area of it. And the easiest way to do this is just to break up your shape into parts that we can find the area of. So let's think about this. This whole length down here is 9. Okay. But I know up to here is 5. So that means this length down here would also be 5. Well, what's left of our 9 if up to here is 5? Or just simply subtract, right? What's 9 minus 5? 4. So now I know from here to here is 4. Now we can easily find the area of rectangle B because look, here's my base, 4. Here's my height, is 7. So I'm going to put area of B, so we know, or just being organized, area of B equals 7 times 4. 7 times 4 is 28. Now let's see if we can figure out the, um, the area of rectangle A. So looking over here, this whole side measurement is 7, but up to here is 2, so that's about approximately where it would be. So if this is 2, what's left of my 7? Well, it would be 5, right, because 5 plus 2 gives me 7. So that means over here, this height would be 5. So now if I wanted to find the area of rectangle A, area of A equals base times height. 5 times 5 is 25. Now simply we just add our two areas together to get the entire area of a complex polygon. So 28 plus 25 equals 53. Aren't given any units, but... The unit squared, 53 units squared. Get a little more interesting examples here. On this one, they kind of draw out and give us little hints that we can find the area of these three different rectangles here, add them together to get the area of the entire complex. Polygon. Okay, let's start with the easiest one. This blue one that I outlined here. Look, I already know my base is 4, height of 3. So I'll put area of blue equals 4 times 3, which gives me 12. So I've got that one knocked out of the park. All right, let's jump down to our big, long, and narrow green rectangle. So I know my base is 12 down here. 
that's pretty evident, but I need to figure out what our height is. So if we look, this whole length is six, and up to here is three. Well, what's left over for this bottom piece? Well, just another three. So to find the area of this green rectangle, I'm going to take my base of 12 and my height of 3. 12 times 3 is 36. And finally, our last rectangle we need to find. We know again, our base is 3, but we got to figure out what our height is. Well, we found that the height of this green rectangle is 3, which means that it would be 3 over here. So what's left of our 5 if up to here is 3? Well, 5 minus 3 is 2. So now we can find the area of this red rectangle. Area of the red equals base 3 times our height of 2, 3 times 2, which gives me 6. Now we need to add up our three different rectangle areas to get our grand total. So 12 plus 36 plus 6 gives us a grand total of 54. We have the units on this one. Meters squared. Almost done. You're doing great. One more slide left here. Little application problem. So let's read it together. The Grand Forks Country Club is remodeling their pool area. The pool plan includes a two foot tile border around the pool perimeter of a pool that is 17 feet wide and 24 feet long. If the tile costs $17.95 per square foot, how much will it make? How much will it cost to make the border? Excuse me. So sometimes a picture is worth a, th a thousand words. So what's kind of happening in this picture is we're trying to figure out how much this tile that is a border around this pool is going to cost, right? So I'm going to draw my own little sketch here. So here is my little pool. And we are told that it's 17 feet wide and 24 feet long. 24, 17. And think. We want to put a two-foot tiled perimeter around the entire pool. So think, this little tile around is two feet. So think, you have to add two feet on this side. But also, look, it's on this side too, guys, so that's another two feet. So another two feet. And same thing over here, look, two feet here and two feet over here. And then I gotta add two feet over here and two feet over here. So now let's sketch out what this would look like. There we go. We'll add some water to our pool so we don't get confused. So the easiest way to figure out the area of that border is to find the area of both the blue rectangle and then the entire big rectangle. So let's start off by finding the area of the blue pool rectangle. So I'll put area of blue. So again, base times height. My base is 24. My height is 17. Multiply those out and we get 408 feet squared. Okay. That one's pretty self-explanatory. That one's not too hard. The hard part about this example is figuring out what is the dimension now of our new big border here. So I know up to here is 24, but then I have to add two feet this way. So 24 plus 2 is 26, plus another 2 that way would be a total of 28. And then same thing for our height. Well, I know I added two feet here, so 17 plus 2 gives me 19, plus another 2 would give me a total of 21. So now for the area of the green border, 
I'm going to have 28 base times our height, 21. Base times height gives me 588 feet squared. Okay. But now think, I'm not tiling the pool area. I'm not putting tile in here. So now I need to subtract this area from the total of my border. So that's all we're going to do, guys. Take our total border area minus the pool area and get 180 feet squared. But now to be honest with the question, we were asked if the tile cost $17.95 per square foot, how much will it cost to make the border? So now I hope you're thinking I have to take my total square footage times the price to get the total. If I take 180 times 17.95, I'm going to get $3,231 to tile that border. Seems kind of expensive for not a very large pool, but what do I know, right? What do I know? Um, thank you very much. If you made it to the end of the video, I appreciate you taking the time to do notes while I'm not at school today. Please be kind to the sub, listen to whatever they say. Um, I'm excited to see you guys tomorrow. Have a good rest of your day.